Here's one of the flower boxes Tommy built me the other day. I have cardboard that's been in here in the bottom for a couple of days. I'm going to put some soil in here and then I'm going to have to run back to the store to get some compost and other things. So that's three cubic feet of soil I put in there. Once I've got the compost and manure in there, it should be full to the top. I'll mix it all in. Because let's be honest, in a world filled with chaos and bad news and I don't know, sometimes just misery, gardening can give you a something to do to just drown out all of that doesn't mean it's without its own problems like snails and aphids and mites and chickens but the time that I'm out here doing my gardening I can just forget about all that nonsense and worry about attracting butterflies with milkweed. I'm not really sure why I planted this in this pot knowing that I was going to really be transplanting. It's kind of hard to get them out and you can't squish the pot. it out. I'm gonna put it right here in the middle of this flower bed that Tommy so kindly built for me. What is that? Oh, that's what the seeds came in. How funny. We're gonna leave that on there. Anyway, it was getting pretty root bound. Explained why I wasn't doing all that hot. There was a lot of aphids on this this year. I think next year I'm going to buy some, uh, order some ladybugs. Because we seem to have a shortage of ladybugs around here. And ladybugs will get rid of the aphids. I don't see any more on here. Oh, yep. Yeah. You want to see some aphids? i get the dirt off my hands. You see the aphids? Nope, oh, that's what the ladybugs would take care of for me. Well, anyway, just gonna get my lovely little plant planted here. And forget about the rest of the world. And hopefully the chickens don't dig it up. Okay, what do we plant next? I have gardenias and Mexican heather. I think I'll plant the Mexican heather next. Look how root bound it is. I got it. I got all these Mexican heather for like $2 a piece from Lowe's. If you shop the clearance rack, you can get some pretty good deals. I'm off of here. Let's see, Mexican heather, which I've grown many times. And says it needs full sun over six hours. We know that. And water two times a week, which I never do once it's been in the ground a few months. You don't have to do that here in my, because we get over 55 inches of rain a year. Average mature size, 12 to 24 inches height, 12 to 24 inches wide, spacing 12 to 24 inches apart. Boomer! So anyway, go get something to break up these roots or it's just going to think it's still in a pot. I don't know how people work out in this heat. With their hair down. Okay. 
Go back to the Mexican house. If I just put it in the ground like this, it thinks it's still in a pot. It's just so root bound. Which is why Lowe's gets rid of them. Because they're not going to water five times a day. This is like no soil. It's just mostly roots. super dry. I'm going to have to get more soil to go in this flower bed. I have put the organic soil, the hummus, the compost, the manure. I've got it all in here. And it's not enough because I didn't get enough bags. Store of my life. Good news is, is I work by a Lowe's, so I can just stop by Lowe's on my way home. And it looks like I need at least three more bags for this. I think I videoed putting cardboard down on the bottom of this to keep the grass from going growing up. Pretty sure I did anyway. Tomorrow, I'm going to be planting squash, cucumbers, and pumpkin. I'm going to be planting pumpkin. I've never done fall crops, but I decided this was the year to plant fall crops. And if this year is like any other year, it should be fun. My tomatoes did not do well this year at all. My Mad Hatter peppers, they did really good. They always do good, even though it froze last year and I had to cut it back down to the ground. They still came back. Okay. The Mexican Heather's in. And there's the butterfly, the milkweed for the monarch butterflies. And I still have that Mexican Heather, that Gardenia, and that Gardenia to get into the ground. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the Mexican Heather in the ground because I know they're so root bound. I reuse the plastic pots from the store to start other plants. You guys coming to see what I'm doing? 
You gonna dig up my plants overnight? No, can't dig them up overnight because I lock you up at night. But you're gonna wait until I leave and come try to dig them up, aren't ya? My husband's home. This is my Mad Hatter pepper plant. And as you can see, it gets a bunch of peppers on it. And I come out here when I need some. And I just snip it off. This particular one froze this last year during our what we call snowmageddon but it has come back and it's now as tall as I am which is 5'5". Five five. Yes there's tomatoes back there I need to put in the compost bin. Anyway it's just one of the many things that I grow that I haven't shown you yet. The chickens love to hang out at the roots so they're constantly digging up the roots. As you can see, and I constantly have to recover the roots. So these are some of the seeds that I have. I've got squash, cucumber, and two different kinds of pumpkin. I got these two flower easels, I think is what they're called, from a lady on the internet for free. I'm going to use them kind of like you would an obelisk or a tomato cage. I'm going to grow these cucumbers and squash on these. So I made some markers so I don't forget where I've planted which vegetable. And I'm just going to put a couple of seeds per hole. Sometimes one won't come up, so I'm going to put cucumber there. Cover it up. There's my marker. People tend to be negative about fall crops for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I'm done living by other people's rules and their experiences and their negativity. Go ahead and put one, let's see, right about there. I'm going to try things for myself from now on. And if it doesn't work, what did I do? I guess I wasted, in quotes, 10 minutes of my time in less than a quarter. Because he said this couple of seeds didn't cost that much. Pumpkin seeds. Okay, they are all planted. Pumpkins over here and the other over there. 
And what are you planting for fall crops? Okay, there's the blue potato bush that I did a video about. It's growing really well. Kind of leaning over because I just watered it. Here's the day lilies that I just planted. I'll mulch around them and get some weed barrier down this wheat, hopefully. There's the succulent planter that I, used to be a sink. And then on top of the weed barrier, there'll be the Colorado River Rock. And this purslane was in that daylily pot, so I like purslane. I'm not going to get rid of it. I just need to find something to put it in. I decided I'm just going to stick it in here in this flower bed for now. Let it kind of spread out.
We'll see how it does in there for now. And for those of you saying, ooh, not purslane, let me show you what my other purslane looks like. This is one of my other purslane. Has very pretty flowers on it. So yes, purslane. And this is the big mess that I started in the last couple of days. That used to be my burn pit, fire pit, whatever you want to call it, but we got our granddaughter, this huge trampoline, and it's too close. So I started dismantling it and come to find out half these um, cinder blocks are broken. So I started to rebuild it and make a count of how many new cinder blocks I need to get. And was trying to burn some of the old stuff to get very far because of the heat. But I did start rebuilding it right there. And I need about 11 more cinder blocks. I won't bore you with filming me heaving and sweating trying to get all of this into our little dumpster. But they just disintegrated. So all of this needs to be carted away. I've been laying the good things over here on my bench. And I moved my picnic table so now I've got to sort out all my daughter's grand my daughter my granddaughter's toys. And this is my Confederate rose hibiscus which is really big. Don't know if we're gonna get any flowers this year because it did freeze. And I did have to cut it all the way down to, I don't know, 12 inches. I have a lot more I need to cut off. But this is such a pretty plant. It gets plate-sized pink flowers on it, so I'm really hoping it does flower this year. Trimmed up some elephant ears, because when they touch the ground, they turn yellow. And I'm going to have to move my pallet uh, walkway I made because as you can see, the elephant ears are growing out over it. Not a problem. Just have to move my bench and then shift all of that to the right. Put some more rocks down anyway. There's where I moved my picnic table to. It's in a better place away from the chicken coop. I just need to hose it down real good. And my jasmine, despite these weeds, is doing really well climbing up the teepee that we made from rebar. It's about to there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. There we go. You can see. And basically, we took rebar and the ends are buried in the ground. I need to get rid of these bricks. They were to keep the lawn guy from weed eating some, some stuff down that I didn't want weed eated down that are no longer there. Anyway, so we put all the rebar down into the ground at least six inches. And at the top here, we I stripped some copper wire that had been pulled out of the house during our remodel. So this is copper wire wrapped around to hold it here. And then I have a solar light that comes on at night, just wired in right here at the top. My granddaughter gets a kick out of it. And if that jasmine does what's it's, what it's supposed to do, then it'll wrap all around it and will be really pretty. I'm gonna put a bunch of rocks in here. I had considered putting, making a little sandbox in here, like with a, a swimming pool or something for my granddaughter, but the cat, local cats and animals would just, you know, use it as a litter box. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put rocks in there. This is Ruelia. It's flowering. You can see the spent uh, flowers on the ground. Crepe myrtle still doing well. The bark scale that I had treated. I don't know if 
you can see it. I think I'm gonna take and just scrub it off with a brush and some soapy water. There's ants all over the tree now. Not sure what that's about. Web. Lantana is still doing pretty well, despite the fact that somebody broke it off right here. And the rose bush that separates me from my neighbors seriously needs to be deadheaded, but it is doing well. I got it for Mother's Day. I need to deadhead it and make sure it's not going through on my neighbor's side. They probably won't like that. My hydrangea are pretty much done for the year. I think I got that one flower this year because these bloom on old wood. And because of the uh, snowmageddon, I had to cut these down to about six inches. This one I didn't have to, so it did flower. It was, I guess, more protected. I don't know. But maybe they'll come back next year. Succulents are doing good. This is lemongrass that I'm, I grew from seed to keep mosquitoes away. I actually grew it in this and I took half of it and put it in here and I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the other half yet. It smells really good. So anyway, that's a tour of what I've been doing today. I have more to do before I can go in and take a shower and quit looking like a old sweaty hag. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching and you guys have a good evening.